Hello everyone and thank you for joining me today. In this video I want to talk about memoirs. So I made a video about memoirs I think last year and that video was the 10 memoirs I read and I highly recommend. And making that video I realized how much I love memoirs. I'm gonna link it for you in the cards but also in the description box if you haven't checked it out. This time this video is also gonna be about memoirs but this is my memoir TBR if, you, if I can call it that. Why not? Because ever since I made that video, I added more and more memoirs to my TBR on Goodreads, to my want to read shelf. And I realized that most of these memoirs this time are memoirs by women. So I wanted to maybe, I wanted to dedicate a special video to this uh, TBR I have. So if you know anything else, maybe lesser known memoirs, uh, in a similar way to these, then please let me know. Especially if the memoirs you know and you have read are written by women with a non-English background. I think, um, I think I would like to read more of those. I have just finished the first one from my list uh, that I'm gonna come to at some point uh, today. And that was, was also a really hard-hitting one, but I really enjoyed it and I think it gave me a great insight into that person's background and culture as well. So let's just get into these ones. And I have my computer here with my Goodreads open. So let me just, let's just start and let's just get through these memoirs. So the first book I have is In My Own Moccasins by Helen Knott. And I, I put this book on my TBR after I saw it on Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Musings channel. Her channel is always a great source for amazing nonfiction books and memoirs. And I believe a few of the memoirs I have in my previous video were also ones I discovered through her channel. So when I saw her discussing this book, I immediately put it on my TBR. Also because this author is also an activist and she's fighting for the rights of the indigenous people in Canada. And I don't know a lot about the indigenous people and especially indigenous women, but I've seen a movie about the disappearance of an indigenous woman. And I believe uh, it was case also of a sexual abuse and murder at the end. And that movie was absolutely, absolutely harrowing. Still to this day, when I think about it, I'm like shuddering inside. And since I've seen that movie, I heard, the, I heard from, I heard, read, I don't know. I, I got to the information that uh, there's a lot of indigenous women in Canada and I believe also in the US who are disappearing and are raped and the police never really investigates as into what happened to them. If you want to see that movie, I can tell you its title, it's called Wind River. It is, it is a really hard one to watch. So I'm not sure that this memoir will have anything to do with that, but I also, but I know that in this memoir, the author is writing about her addiction, but also about um, sexual violence. So I believe it will touch on that subject as well. The next one I have on this list is Minor Feelings, an Asian American Reckoning by Katie Park Hong. I put this on this list actually just today because I think this one has themes which are very current and very important to read. So basically in this uh, book, the author, who is also a poet and an essayist, strings together her essays into this autobiographical memoir-like book in which she talks about her experience as an Asian American in the US. She is from a Korean background. So in this book she says that she, she, she understands that the minor feelings she has occur when American optimism contradicts your own reality, when you believe the lies you're told about your own racial identity. So I have read a bit of a mixed reviews, but overall I think people recommend this book, and especially if you're not familiar with, with experiences similar to this. And also considering what's happening or ha what happened recently in the US, I think it, it's an important one to read. The next one I have on this list is Know My Name by Chanel Miller. And I'm gonna read a bit of the description here on Goodreads and I don't think I need to say more than that. So it says here, she was known to the world as Emily Doe when she stunned millions with a letter. Brock Turner had been sentenced to just six months in a county jail after he was found sexually assault assaulting her on Stanford's campus. Her victim impact statement was posted on BuzzFeed 
went instantly viral, viewed by 11 million people within the first four days. It was translated globally and read on the floor of Congress. It inspired changes in California law and the recall of the judge in the case. Thousands wrote to say that she had given them the courage to share their own experiences of assault for the first time. The next one I have is Riverine by Angela Palm. So in this one, Angela Palm talk, talks about growing up in a very small village, which is not even on the map, it says here. And she always wanted to escape because she wanted to do more in life than just be a waitress at the local restaurant. She escaped, she went to live in a bigger city, but she was drawn back to, to her place of birth, also because of a boy whom she loved ever since he was, she was a child or a young adult. And this man uh, turns out to be in jail for a brutal murder. So I'm not really sure what is the actual story in this, um, whether it's a small town America story, whether it's a story about social injustice, whether it's a story about the crime that this boyfriend committed. But I'm excited to find out. So I'll leave it at that. If you have read it, let me know if, uh, if it's a good one. Because I don't know, I found sometimes that these memoir descriptions are really vague. <laughs> but I also have also seen this uh, mentioned by several here on booktube and the consensus seems to be that it's worth the read. So I put it on my TBR. The next one on my list is all the way from Australia and it is The Hate Race by Maxine Beneba Clark. So the author is also a slam poetry writer. She also has an Afro-Caribbean background. So I'm pretty sure that this is going to be a hard story to read, but also a beautiful one, a beautifully written one, considering her poetry background. What really sold me on this was the quote I found, which says, against anything I have ever been told was possible, I was turning white. On the surface of my skin, a miracle was quietly brewing. So I don't think I need to know more, but I'm excited to get to this, especially because I haven't re read a lot of books, especially nonfiction memoirs, which are from Australia. The next two on this list are a bit similar, even though I have read only one. I finished the first one I'm going to talk about today, but I feel that they are similar because both authors are from Somalia. So the one that I finished today is Infidel by Ayan Hirsi Ali. I had this on my TBR for so many years and I don't know why I waited to read it, but I finally did. And I really enjoyed it despite the harrowing topics. Um, I have never read a book by a Somalian author and I, I don't know a lot about that country. But I feel that this book gave me a great insight into how life was in that country and also in the surrounding area because oh, Ayan Hirsi Ali's family had to flee from Somalia when she was a child, a smaller child, because there was political instability in her country and her father and a large majority of the population opposed the current regime, regime so they were fighting. And for her father, as one of the uh, more important members of this resistance, um, I mean, I guess, I guess they had to flee and they lived in several countries before they moved to Kenya. So they lived in, lived in Saudi Arabia, they lived in Ethiopia, but for the most part, they lived in, in Kenya. And this is about uh, that, what happened in that country and the development of that country and its people and, and the different political situations and religious situation in that country and that area during the span of her life, of her childhood mostly. Because when she was 20, 21, 2, she has managed to flee and to seek a refuge in, uh, in the Netherlands where she actually became a member of the parliament. She became famous, famous, known, because at some point she made a short movie with, with uh, a Dutch 
a producer and because of that movie the producer was killed and she was also threatened her life was threatened and most of this book is just basically about her life and bring an upbringing in the in in africa and i also found fascinating the part where she went where she, after she was in the netherlands and how she became a member of parliament I know that at the moment the author lives in the US and she works there on different women's issues. And looking at her Goodreads author page, I see that she has written a lot of different books on the topic of feminism and and the women's movement and women's right within within the Muslim community. So if you haven't heard about this or haven't read it, I highly, highly recommend it. It is a hard one to read because she had a really tough childhood and there's sections here which 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 are just are just heartbreaking the way women are treated and the way she was treated by her family and that culture that environment is just it's just foreign to us here in the west so i believe it is an important one to read and as i said i can only recommend it the next one is the one, the other one written by a Somalian author or an author with a Somalian background. And it is This is What America Looks Like, My Story from Refugee to Congresswoman by Ilhan Omar. So basically, the author was eight, year, eight years old living in Mogadishu in Somalia when a war broke out. And she was the youngest of seven siblings and her life was completely destroyed. They had to flee to Kenya because of that war. And after four years of waiting in a refugee camp in Kenya, they finally um, ended up leaving to the US. So it took them four years to be able to leave. So this is, I guess, her journey and her growing up in the US. So where I think this is different from Ayan Hirsi Ali's book is that she they left much earlier and she found and her and her family found freedom much earlier. Whereas in Ayan Hirsi Ali's book, it is only herself who left and later I guess her sister followed her, but most of her family was still left behind in Kenya and I guess later they left to Somalia. So there's still different stories and I can't wait to read about this one. And now we're down to the last three. And this uh, next one is Diary of a Survivor, 19 Years in a Cuban Women's Prison by Anna Rodriguez. So I think this one is what came out in 95. So I think this one is the is one which is the oldest book on this CBR. But it really it's really interesting because it is about um, what happened in Cuba during those times, I believe in the 60s. And of course, from the title, this is also about uh, this uh, woman's experience in a Cuban prison. So basically, when she was a teenager, she was a medical student and she protested against the current regime in Cuba. When that regime was overthrown, at the, be at the beginning, she thought that everything's going to get better. But then the next regime proved to be just as bad as the previous one. So she ended up protesting against that one as well. And, some, and she, she kind of joined the anti-regime revolution, something like that. And then she was betrayed and she was sentenced to 30 years in prison. So I guess she spent only 19 years in prison. But this book deals with what happened in that prison and how they were treated. And I think it was pretty, pretty brutal. The next one is a very inspirational story. And one I've seen a movie adaptation of very, very long time ago. It is the story of my life by Helen Keller. So Helen Keller lived between 1880 and 1968. When she was one and a half years old, she became severely ill. And afterwards, she became blind and deaf and also mute afterwards. So basically, this is a story of how she overcome how she overcame all her disabilities with the help of her teacher and how she learned to speak and how she went to school and how she graduated college from with magna cum laude. So this is, I think, the first 22 years of her life. And I'm really excited to get to this. And the last one I have on this list is one one of you has recommended to me. And it is The Last Girl, My Story of Captivity 
and my fight against the Islamic State by Nadia Murad. So basically, Nadia was living in northern Iraq in a community of shepherds and farmers when one day uh, her, her village was attacked and everyone was murdered. Everyone except women, younger women, who were taken uh, by ISIS to be, I guess, sex slaves. And this is her experience and how she escaped. So these are all the 10 books. And as you could hear, a lot of these stories are pretty heartbreaking. And a lot of these stories are difficult reads as well. But I don't know, I somehow these are the memoirs I tend to pick up. So let me know if you have heard about any of these or you have read any of these. And also, again, if you know anything else, any other memoirs that you would recommend, please let me know in the comments below. But this is where I will leave you today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye. Yeah.